The deserts of Egypt are famous of springs. The water of these springs are either hot or cold. People enjoy swimming in it daytime or nighttime, wintertime or summertime. The water itself of the springs have got minerals in it, so they are very good heal for the body. Some people come to enjoy their time and some other people come to heal. Water springs spread all over Siwa Oasis and they form a great attraction to both tourists and Egyptians who come from all over to enjoy a dip in those warm springs that are famous of their healing water that contains minerals. One of these springs is B1 or the well number one. To reach its location you can enjoy a safari desert trip with a 4x4 wheel drive to its magnificent location. Siwa Oasis is considered one of the major depressions in the western desert of Egypt. These depressions are Siwa Depression, Qattara, El Bahariya, El Farafra, and the depression of the two oases of El Dakhla and El Kharga. The depression of Qattara and Siwa and Gahbu oasis lie on one line from east to west. The total area of Siwa depression is 1,088 square kilometers. In its middle exist four salty lakes. They are El Maasir in the northeast of the oasis, El Zaytun Lake in the east, Siwa Lake west of Shali City, and El Maraki Lake in the west. The biggest of them all is El Zaytun Lake, which lands reaches 30 square kilometers, and its width is four to five kilometers. For the springs, they reach the total of 281 springs, gushing with stable water that end up in the salty lakes, causing the water level to rise continuously. The depths of these springs reach 4 to 15 meters or more. The visitor of Siwa is immediately attracted to these springs once he arrives to the oasis from any direction. One of the best examples of these springs is Ain Qurayshit, or the Spring of Qurayshit, as it is the biggest of them all, and Cleopatra Spring, which is a part of the history and heritage of the oasis to which several stories are connected.
Tourists often go for a swim in these lakes, for the water is warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Actually, the temperature of the water varies within the hours of the same day. The lands that cannot benefit from all these springs by irrigation turn dry and become what's called Karshif lands, which is mud saturated with natural salt. This mud is so solid when dried, that's why it was used instead of stones for building houses. Wherever you go around in Siwa, you'll find houses built of Karshif and it's very clear in Shali Old City. The springs of Siwa are usually surrounded by walls built of stone to prevent the sand from falling in them. But the walls don't hide the beauty of the green moss colors and the bubbles that keep coming up from the natural cracks in the rocks beneath. of Siwa Oasis is in the middle of the desert, away from where the rain falls down, near the coast of the Mediterranean, yet one of the dangerous problems that threatens the oasis is the abundance of water, where springs and lakes are spread all over the oasis. The spring water is that water that comes from natural earth reservoirs that lie in between one layer and another that belongs to the Mesolithic period. The salinity of the table water is quite high. This salt is sodium and magnesium salt. Thus, not all springs water is suitable for irrigation or drinking. Thus, the inhabitants rely on the water that comes from springs, which water comes from shallow layers of limestone, which salinity is tolerated. Recently, a major natural phenomena happened in Siwa that was of great news to tourism in the oasis. Almost 60 kilometers away from the center of Siwa city exists an area that stretches for some kilometers and is used for salt mining. Mining salt in Siwa is one of the major industries that started as small businesses for the locals and ended up being supported and sponsored by the Egyptian governmental companies to control the quality of the salt and its prices in the local Egyptian market. The locals use the salt for daily use and also for making artifacts by hand made of pure salt, like ashtrays and candle holders and even lamps, and they are sold till today in all touristic sites and in shops specialized in salt productions and in bazaars. As for food, they make salt with all flavors like lemon salt, orange salt, ginger salt, mint salt and many other flavors.
after drilling the salty lands, natural lakes started to form in all sizes and shapes. The astonishing and amazing information about these lakes is that the surrounding sides and bottom are all made of salt. Thus, the salt in the mass of water makes it denser, and due to the density of fluid, upward buoyant force increases and makes any object float, not allowing it to sink. These factors of floating made the salt lake's sites very attractive to everyone, Egyptians and tourists. They come all the way to these remote lakes just to enjoy the floating swimming. When the body totally relaxes on the surface of the water, not allowing the body to take an upward shape or bring the legs downwards, which makes it safe for everyone, either a swimmer or for those who cannot swim. Moreover, the temperature of the water is always cool in the summer and very fresh in the winter. All these factors made the salty lakes in Siwa one of the best attractions of Siwa Wizis. According to the manuscript of Siwa, which contains the local history of the oasis and was written in 1883, there were 30 springs in Hamisa, but what remained usable are very few. Besides, its water is wasted, as it pours in the salty lakes of Hamisa and El Maraki. Most of these springs are old and are filled with sand, but it seemed that this land remained prosperous after the Roman period. In the 15th century, the famous historian El Makrizi described this area to be vast countries that comprised a big number of palm trees and fertile lands and water springs. In 1950, the government started to clean and purify the old springs in this area, which were filled with sand. The purpose was to start an experimental project to reclaim the land and dry part of the salty lakes of Hamisa and Maraki, but unfortunately, the project stopped. In a close range to the water springs of Hamisa and at the western edge of El Hateya, lies on a relatively short rocky hill a temple. That temple was built with bricks of sandstone, many of which are irregular in shape and size. Its walls are thick and it used to be square in shape. There are no reliefs or constructional elements that are clear enough to tell about it, except for the thickness of its walls and the way of its building. Stones were used in the outer parts while the inner walls were filled with rubble and plaster. probably goes back to the Roman period. The measurements of this temple is as follows. The west and the east side is 9.3 meters and the north and the south sides is 14.3 meters. The main entrance lies in the middle of the southern wall 
and its width is 1.55 meters. About 4 meters west of the temple, there are foundation to walls that belong to the same age of the temple. There are settlements and attached buildings that were serving the place. As a result of the abundance of water in Siwa and the continuous flow of its springs along the years throughout history, it became inevitable to construct canals to drain the excess water that's not used by the springs. Thus, the drainage system in Siwa was founded since the most ancient pharaonic and Greek-Roman period. In Siwa Center, there is a general drain that starts from Agurmi Lake, passing by the agricultural land, then between the two temples of the Oracle and Omabede temples, then heads west until it reaches the Mountain of the Dead area and Siwa Center, then deviates into several other drainages where there is a drain for each spring. Beside the Oracle and Omabeida temples, there are leveled stones placed carefully on both sides of the drain, which proves its antiquity. Another one started from Siwa and passed by the villages and springs of the west until it reached Siwa Lake. The main drain of Hamisa and Mishandat discharged its water at the eastern side of the lake. In 1960, the cultivated land was almost 2,500 acres, which means that the lake's area equals four times the cultivated land. They have existed since antiquity, at least since the advent of Alexander the Great to the oasis for he marched beside one of them before he reached Amon's temple.